So when you when you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed and you open the blinds and you you see the sun shining, do you find in yourself this tendency to materialize things or to reduce them down, or or, or is it kind of like a an active mental effort you have to put in to try and see things symbolically, or does it get better as time goes on? Is it almost like a habit, or is it more like mm. a switch that goes off? What you th <laughs> thinking? Thinking symbolically, me? Uh, yeah, I so, don't know. Um, I, I so don't totally know. Like, yeah, I don't totally know why it is that, like, let's say we're able to think this way. And it just it's something that happened to us in some ways. Um, it's not necessarily. It's also a product of our time. Thinking symbolically is not, in some ways, it's a sign that we're in a bad place. Because in the normal world, you don't think, you don't have to think symbolically at all. You just exist. The fact that we think symbolically is is actually a sign of alienation. That mm -hmm. the seeing symbolism is a sign of alienation. And so it's like you don't usually you don't you don't talk about what it means to shake hands. You just shake hands. You don't you don't explain to people why you would have to sit around the table and eat together because it it has a it has the symbolic element or why you should participate in this and that religious ritual because it's because it brings together the different elements towards one. Usually you would just do that. It would be intuitive. You wouldn't have to explain it. And so the fact that let's say I'm explaining it means that I live in a certain that I actually live in a form of alienation, like I'm I am alienated. And and I'm actually kind of using that alienation against itself, where it's like I'm alienated enough to then look back and see the pattern and they escape, wait a minute, but this is actually meaningful. Like this, this is actually meaningful. Uh, but this helps people to understand also why. Because often people tell me, like, why don't the church fathers explain symbolism? Why why don't they talk about symbolism? And I'm like, they didn't have to explain it. They just had mm. to exist in it. All they did, so they did typology. They would just they would create analogies between you know different aspects of the world, uh, but they didn't explain the typologies, and they didn't they didn't have to break it down for people who didn't live in that world anymore. But like, sadly, that's what we have to do. So so in some ways. It's, I think it's also important to understand that in some ways, even what I'm doing in is is from somewhat of an alienated position. And so mm -hmm. it's like it's hard to say. It's not natural for me to, like, go to church. It's an effort. Right. Yeah. It's not something that just comes naturally and like participate in the liturgy. I, I enjoy it and I, I find great joy and meaning and purpose in it. But it's not something that just kind of flows, you know, I, I'm more, I am more modern and most people are more modern than that. So, yeah, it, it kind of makes me think of if I tell you a joke and then as I tell you the joke, I start explaining the joke and it's through the explanation and the analysis of the joke that I actually remove all the humor from it. And then, you know, you, you don't laugh as opposed to me just telling you the joke and you, you laugh, right? It's yeah. that difference between or playing a board game. And, you know, as we're playing, I'm, I'm talking about the, the guy who created the board game and his history. And it's kind of irrelevant to the game we're playing, right? The point is to be immersed in it. So that's a, that's an interesting point to me because I think sometimes I, you know, your watches, especially your content, you know, there's almost a sense that I think I'm I'm doing something wrong. Like I should be seeing the world in a specific way, and if I could just do that, then things, uh, you know, I somehow I'd feel different or I'd experience things in a more joyous way. But really, it's not about analyzing the world and trying to get into something it's really just about going about your life um i hate to say it but it sounds a lot like um before enlightenment chop wood carry water after enlightenment chop wood carry water <laughs> yeah something like that yeah that sounds that sounds fine uh but it's okay to have a bridge like i think that in yeah. some ways let's say what i'm start trying to do is kind of jumpstart something, right? It's like you mm. you've got a you got a motor that needs to be jump started, and then once it gets going, then at some point you hope that that people will be more involved and engaged. Uh, but but so yeah, so it's not it's not completely useless. Of 
Of course not. If it was completely useless, I wouldn't do it. I think it is useful. And I think that, so one of the things that I try to do, let's say, is try to invoke, let's say, try to provoke insight in people. Like that's something that's real. Yeah. So if I can connect things together in a way that you didn't expect, like I can surprise you with the connection. And once you see the connection, you know it's re- it's true, right? You can't go back. You can't think the way you did before. You hadn't seen it until it was shown to you. And then when you see it, it's like, yeah, there's no way that I can that I can deny this now that I've seen it. And so I think that those insight moments are important and useful for people to jumpstart the symbolic machine, you could say, and and now realize, wait a minute, no, like actually the world is patterned and the world is meaningful. And so, yeah, so that is something I think that that you can do in terms of symbolism that is that is almost more useful than explaining the way symbolism works is actually causing insight. Uh, and so in some ways art does that and, and can do that if it's well, if it's well done too. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually reminded of a, of a quote about uh, the Greeks couldn't see the trees for the dryads um, or, you know, the naturalist talks about the bush and the brook but the supernaturalist talks about the god of the brush, the god of the brook, and the god of the bush, and it's almost like you need to discuss these points, like you say, to get things started. But hopefully, one day, you know, you won't need to necessarily be conscious about it. And I think it, a lot of it comes down to the way that people pass on this knowledge to their children. And I think people actually actively need to maybe not speak in. I don't know, purely symbolic terms, um, but uh, definitely avoid reducing things down constantly. I think oh, that's yeah, probably sure. the, the first step, right? That's, a, then, huge, uh, yeah, no, that's a huge thing. And then also understand the the value of sim- symbolic living, you know, and so therefore at least engage in the type of symbolic living that is that is the the most immediate to you. Like a simple example is, um, at least here in North America, we've we've come to a point where people don't eat together. Families don't eat together. And, and so they have all these different schedules and everything. And so they just don't sit together every day to have a meal. And and it's like, yeah, your family won't survive. You're, you, you can't survive as, a, as one if you don't have ritualized and, let's say, encounters between the people that are supposed to constitute the unity. And so, mm-hmm. so you have you that actually has to has to happen. And so, people can understand. It's like, what well, I'm going to be deliberate about this, right? I'm going to have family meals every day, because without them, that basic pattern. It's more important than resolving your conflicts. Like having a family meal every day has more value than like trying to fix some specific thing in your marriage or in your in your family. And so, and so, I hopefully, yeah. So hopefully, things like symbolic thinking or symbolic intuition will help people see that that these these types of activities are worth um, investing in.